The Feywild, a plain of unrestrained and awe-inspiring natural beauty. Bathed in light and filled with mythical creatures, one would be forgiven in believing the Feywild to be a safe travel. While fantastical in appearance, danger certainly lurks around every corner. Dungeons and Dragons The Wild Beyond the Witchlight is an adventure that sends you to travel into the Feywild, starting with the Witchlight Carnival. A festive spectacle that travels through many different worlds is set forth into a splintered domain of the Feywild known as Prismere. The journey is filled with many encounters that seem to be pulled straight from fairy tales. Being such, this adventure is interesting in the fact that it can be solved without fighting a single battle. You can certainly hack and slash your way through most things, but for those who wish to seek a more peaceful option, there's plenty of alternative course of actions for you to take. The Wild Beyond the Witchlight is a great adventure for first-time players, along with Dungeon Masters if they don't mind the theme. For players, it allows those who excel at things other than combat to shine bright, while bringing hilariously strange encounters for you to punch through if you so wish. For Dungeon Masters, the adventure is set up in such a way that it doesn't demand a ton of reading on their part. The sections flow smoothly between one another, and each chapter in the book does a fantastic job in giving you a strong overview of what is to come. I strongly recommend that you read the adventure as it is incredibly creative. Having said that, I will outline the main story of the adventure along with some small details that may be of interest just to highlight the creativity of the writers. Follow me as we explore the story that unfolds in Dungeons and Dragons The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. You have been summoned to the abode of a human warlock named Magic Rosloff. He lives on a giant pumpkin farm, sharing his rustic farmhouse space with rodents and pixies. His adventuring days are behind him, and he looks quite old and frail. Nevertheless, he is delighted to make your acquaintance. I have acquired many treasures and made important contacts during my lengthy adventuring career, says Magic. I would like to pass the treasures I possess and the favors I am owed to you. In exchange, I ask that you travel to Prismere, a domain in the Feywild, and find out what fate has befallen the Archfey that rules it. This Archfey, Zybilna, is my patron and inspiration, the source of my power. I have been unable to contact Zybilna for the better part of a year, and I fear something terrible has happened. My adventuring days are over, but Zybilna has been good to me, and I would like to know she is well before I take my leave. Every 80 years, our world is visited by a traveling extravaganza called the Witchlight Carnival. It recently returned and is camped three days travel from here. I'm asking you now because this carnival might pack up and leave in a week or two, and it contains your only route to Prismere, a fey crossing if you will. Seek out Zybilna of Prismere, help her if you can, and return with proof that she is alive and well. Upon your return, all the hard-won earnings of my adventuring career shall be yours. Magic tells you that Zybilna is a fairy godmother to mortals. She created the carnival as a means by which mortals could enter her realm and beseech her aid. When Magic last visited the carnival, it was run by a pair of Shatter Kai, elves native to the Shadowfell named Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. He assumes they're still in charge. Magic dimly recalls that Witch and Light acquired the carnival more than a hundred years ago from an Eladrin, an elf native to the Feywild. With his old age comes old descriptions that may not be as reliable due to the nature of his first-hand knowledge. He recounts that Prismere is a domain of delight ruled by Zybilna, who dwells in the Palace of Heart's Desire, a magnificent structure in the heart of the domain. Zybilna can assume many forms and is brilliant, secretive, and wise. When she presents herself to mortals, Zybilna usually assumes the form of a statuesque woman with long white hair and a small tattoo shaped like a chicken's foot below one eye. Upon hearing the description of Zybilna's appearance, it unlocks a long forgotten childhood memory of yours. When you were a child, you had met Zybilna. The memory ranges from her reuniting you with a lost pet or fishing you out when you fell into an icy cold pond. While the memories were hazy, they were definitely there. You turn to Magic and inform the old adventurer that you will accept his request and embark towards the carnival, which happens to be not too far from a nearby settlement. Chapter 1 Witchlight Carnival Arriving to the carnival, you are greeted with the sight of a spectacle. 
The witch-like carnival is a fairground of kaleidoscopic tents and wagons crewed by wondrous beings, including many denizens of the Feywild. This is no ordinary carnival. It uses magic to travel from world to world across the material plane, visiting each world once every eight years and setting up business on the outskirts of populated areas. The carnival spends a few days at each location, then packs up and moves to another location on the same world until the decision is made to leave that world and visit the next. The carnival includes a Fey Crossing, allowing travel to and from the Feywild domain of Prismere. Your time in the carnival is full of fun and joy as you search for Zybilna. The carnival games range from exciting snail races and relaxing swan gondola rides to amusing circus performances and roaming treants. Everything that seems to be ordinary to a carnival comes with a little twist that gives it a joyous flair of the Feywild. For example, the gondola ride is a boat being pulled with a swan that seems to love to converse about meta-ethical topics. There is a teapot in the middle that, when entered, expels you out of the spout encased in a bubble before popping high in the sky and gently lowers you to the ground with magic. The ferris wheel is one decorated with unicorns that have secret names to them and will telepathically speak to you if you decipher their names. These are just a few examples of the oddities you will find at the Witchlight Carnival. Through your time at the carnival, you learn a few things that are certainly troubling. Regarding Zybilna, you learn from Atrian that Zybilna of Prismere is frozen in time. Three hags have seized control of Zybilna's domain and split it among them. Together, these hag form the Hourglass Coven. The hag's names are Bavlorna Blightstraw, Skabatha Nightshade, and Endolin Moongrave, and their splinter realms are called Hither, Thither, and Yawn. Each realm is split by a dense fog, and travel between the realms would be near impossible without the help of a guide. The coven is so riddled with distrust that each hag is convinced her sisters are plotting against her. Something is afoot, and it's best that you confront these hags and, if needed, vanquish them. You learn from the employees of the carnival that the path to Prismere is hidden behind that of a house containing mirrors called the Hall of Illusions. Currently, the carnival is being run by that of two strange individuals named Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, and only they know the method to use the mirror house to travel to Prismere. They run the carnival with a magical object called the Witchlight Watch that, if stolen, may be used as leverage to travel to the Feywild. You eventually steal the Witchlight Watch, sending Mr. Witch and Mr. Light into a frantic search. Sensing their desperation for its return, you offer to return the watch to the two of them if they take you to Prismere. They agree and lead you to the Hall of Illusions where, keeping good on their word, begin the process of taking you to the Feywild. As Witch and Light move through the Hall of Illusions, their reflections in the mirror show them as gloomy Shatterkai children, with your own youthful reflections following behind. Soon, they call you to a halt. The mirrors now reflect everyone's true age. Mr. Witch addresses you in a hushed tone. Everything you seek and more lies beyond this mirror. If you mean to step through, then stand in front of the glass and repeat this rhyme. Hither, thither, here and there, Wander yonder, show me where. Uttering the phrase, Miss swirls in one of the mirrors, blotting out your reflection. This is the portal to the Feywild. As you prepare to step through the portal, Mr. Witch and Light send you off with the following advice. Mind the rule of three, future, present, and past. And, find the alicorn and free the dormant queen at last. Cryptic as it is, you take the following bit of information with you as you step into the mirror and into the realm of Prismere. Chapter 2 Hither After stepping through the mirror in the Witchlight Carnival, you've traveled to the portion of Prismere known as Hither. It is an enormous swamp, containing mysterious sights half sunk in the muck. In the distant sky, you spot a great balloon made of patchwork material. It spins out of control as though punctured, causing the wicker basket that hangs from it to swing wildly. The balloon plunges out of sight, disappearing into the fog approximately a mile away. Figuring that to be the place to start your investigation, you travel down the bridge and into the swamps immediately below. As you descend, you are immediately mugged by some Haragon brigands. They reveal that they work for an individual named Agdon Longscarf and seem to be collecting memories for Agdon. You may relinquish some of your memories, or protest. 
Either way, they leave and retreat into the swamps and you proceed onwards. Reaching the destination of the balloon crash, you find a crumpling stone tower that rises out of the swamp, leaning at such an angle that it threatens to kill over. Hanging from the crenellations on the lower side of the tower's peak is a large woven basket at the end of a tangle of ropes and tattered fabric. In the basket, you find a fairy dragon knight by the name of Sir Talavar. He introduces himself as such, proclaiming he is one of the loyal servants to an archfey known as the Summer Queen. Stuck in a cage that resides in the basket, he pleads with you to free him, lest the basket falls from its hanging state and into the jaws of some snakes right below. Sir Talavar explains that he must be free so that he can return to his queen and report the news that Zybilna has been overthrown by three hags known as the Hourglass Coven. He informs you that the key to the cage is found a little way further from here in a location known as Telemi Hill and is in the possession of a goblin named Jingle Jangle. You agree to the fairy dragon's request and travel to Telemi Hill. Telemi Hill is a sentient hill that is friendly lest you choose to provoke it. It speaks through the surrounding shrubbery and trees covering the hill. You tell Telemi Hill that you are only here to find a goblin and retrieve a key in its possession to free a nearby creature. Sensing you to be of no harm, it guides you to the top where you find Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle is an odd goblin covered in keys. You ask Jingle Jangle for the key to Sir Talavar's cage, and she happily hands it over, informing you that she just really likes to collect keys. Jingle Jangle also informs you that a group of brigands had stolen some truffles from her. Annoyed at their thievery, she points the way to the brigands tollway, the headquarters of Agdon Longscarf and his gang of brigands. You reassure Jingle Jangle that you'll take care of the matter and the goblin dances in joy as you leave the hill. As you leave, it seems as Telemi Hill is delighted with Jingle Jangle's high spirits. Before heading to the brigands tollway, you travel back to the tower and free Sir Talavar from his cage. Polite and courteous, Sir Talavar thanks you for your aid and bids you a fond farewell, adding, your valor will not be forgotten. He flies off in a hurry as you leave for the brigands' tollway. Arriving at the tollway, you encounter the Haragon brigands, along with one that wears a long bright blue scarf. This is Agdon Long Scarf. He darts around you quickly, stealing things from your body all while taunting you. You eventually get a hold of his long scarf and capture him. With his defeat, his former followers shun him and regard you as formidable. You inquire about the hag, Bavlorna and they reveal that she resides in a location called Downfall, and offer to take you there. Accepting the request, you travel to Downfall and make your way to the Hag. Along the way, you find a scarecrow named Clapperclaw, who seems to have misplaced its head. It offers to be your guide if you wish to travel to the realm of Tither, but would really appreciate its head being returned to him. Hidden in a vault in Bavlorna's house is the head of Clapperclaw, in which you may return to the scarecrow. Regardless if you return its head, Clapperclaw acknowledges your quest to save Prismere and offers to be your guide if you ever need it. Eventually meeting the hag, she requests that you help her with some chores before properly hearing you out. You help her with tasks, such as finding her missing book or picking up a crate of small animal carcasses. After doing so, you meet with Bavlorna once again and she informs you of a few things. The hag tells you that Skabatha resides in a hollowed out tree in Tither named Loomlarch. Within the heart of the tree will be the portraits of Bavlorna and three others, Endolin, Skabatha, and Tasha. She wishes to obtain Skabatha's portrait and is willing to strike a bargain with you for it. When questioned about Tasha, a new name you have yet to hear of, the witch goes silent and says nothing more. Whether you accept her bargain or not, you exit Bavlorna's house and take a balloon stationed outside along with Clapperclaw as a guide into thither. With that, you travel off into the sky and across the fog that separates hither and thither. Chapter 3 Thither The mist parts to reveal a primeval forest. A fragrant breeze wafts between the enormous trees, sending motes of pollen dancing into the air. Patches of sunlight kiss the forest floor, and the sweet melody of birdsong echoes all around. You've entered thither the realm of Prismir ruled by Skabatha. After entering, you exit the balloon and travel to a nearby cave. Within the cave, you find an old man named Nib, who is cursed to spend his vast wealth to craft items for those who ask. 
You ask the unfortunate soul for information regarding Skabatha, and he tells you that she also goes by the name of Granny Nightshade. Granny Nightshade runs a workshop in Loom Lurch, using children as workers to craft the creepiest toys. She is obsessed with capturing Will of the Feywild, a boy who runs a crew known as the Getaway Gang that helps children escape her workshop. Nib points you in the direction of Little Oak, a treant that protects the Getaway Gang. Thanking him for his time, you leave and proceed onwards to Little Oak. When you arrive at Little Oak, you find children scampering up the treant and hiding within a treehouse. You assure them that you have not come to harm them and they reluctantly invite you in. Will, the leader of the gang, tells you of their plan to infiltrate Loom Lurch once more and rescue the remaining children. You express interest in aiding the children and they accept your aid, recommending you search out the Wayward Pool. Will hands you a unicorn costume that allows you passage towards the Wayward Pool and instructs you to light a fire in a bowl that resides in the middle of the pool. Along with the costume, he introduces you to an oil can named Squirt that may be of aid in navigating the Land of Yawn. With that, you don the unicorn costume and travel towards the Wayward Pool. Once in the middle of the pool, you light the bowl found here as instructed. Suddenly, a unicorn by the name of Lamorna appears. She asks why you've come to Thither, and you explain to her your goal to find Zybilna and rid Prismere of the Hourglass Coven. She sympathizes with her cause, and reveals to you that Zybilna was the Archfey of Prismere, but was usurped by her cruel hag stepsisters. The stepsisters captured Lamorna's mate, Eladon, stole his horn, and used this magic to imprison Zybilna in a stronghold known as the Palace of Heart's Desire. Lamorna informs you that Eladon is currently a prisoner of the hags, and his horn is the key to free Zybilna. Additionally, she recommends finding Amador the Dandelion, one of Yon's denizens, to safely lead you to the Palace of Heart's Desire. Thanking the unicorn for her aid, you press on, heading towards Loom Lurch. Once arriving at Loom Lurch, you find it to be a large hollow tree that houses the hag of this realm. You meet with the hag, Skabatha, also known as Granny Nightshade, roaming around in her abode. She informs you that she wishes to spoil a play that is occurring in her stepsister's castle in Yawn, Motherhorn. Skabatha offers you a reward of your choice if you wish to aid her. Regardless if you accept the deal or not, you aid Will and his gang with freeing the children and discover Eladon's horn in one of the cupboards. You scour the building, searching for the unicorn, until you find a flying rocking horse that has an indent where a horn once stood. Noting that this must be Eladon, you commit to return once and use the horn to free Zybilna from her frozen prison. You rush back to Little Oak to drop off the children before venturing into the mist towards Yawn with Squirt as your guide. Chapter 4 Yawn Parting through the mist, you stand on a path that wends between rocky crags on a mountainside. The sky is dark and full of thunderclouds. For a second, Lightning splits the sky, striking nearby mountaintops and illuminating a distant pinnacle of rock that has a foreboding castle carved out of it. Deciding to head towards the sinister castle in the distance, you don't head far until you encounter a slender elf wearing a crescent moon mask and a dandelion adorning a small rapier. The dandelion goes by the name of Amador and is accompanied by her companion, Polinella, the honeybee. The elf present is Gleam, and she is a twin that once resided in the witch-like carnival. Having been cursed by Endolin, the Hag of Yawn, Gleam wishes to find her twin sister, Glister, and recruits the Dandelion and you for aid. She informs you that not too far from here is the Lockbury Henge, where you may find a clan of Korids and strike up an alliance with them. Additionally, an elf named Alagarthas at the Fey Beacons may need your help. Gathering your new allies, you first travel to the Lockbury Henge. Atop a boulder-strewn plateau, you find a circle of eight megaliths containing the Korids, they live in fear of Endolin, but refuse to act against her in the case that the Briganox may attack them at their weakest. The Korids believe that the Briganox are in league with Endolin, and would be more than willing to aid you if the Briganox were taken care of. They point you in the direction of the Briganox mines, which lie beneath the mountains, and you promptly leave, heading to deal with them. On the way there, you find the Fey Beacons, where you can see a lake along with eight beacons. An elf on the lake is desperately trying to light the beacons, but the paratons in the sky constantly douse the flames. The elf is named Alagarthus, and is trying to return home via lighting the beacons. When the fey beacons are lit, it allows the one who lights the beacons to return home, wherever that may be. 
You aid the elf by putting on an extravagant performance for the Paratons, which impresses them, and you are able to persuade them to stop their nuisance. With that, the elf lights the beacon and leaps into the lake, returning home. You continue your journey to the bottom of the mountains, where you find the Briganok Mine. Within these mines, you meet with the Briganok to find that they too despise Endelin and wish to see her downfall. You inform them of the Korids in the mountain above that wish for the same outcome and formulate a truce between the two clans. They take you to a secret tunnel that leads into the stage workshop of Endelin's home, Motherhorn. Inside Motherhorn, you are directed to a stage where you put on a performance to gain an audience with the hag. Impressed with your skills, she invites you to her room in which she offers you a bargain in exchange for any request you may have. Whether you accept or refuse her deals, you leave her presence and explore more of Motherhorn. From here, you infiltrate the large amphitheater and find Gleam's sister, Glister, locked in a cage. You devise a plan to disguise Glister in a convincing costume and escape Motherhorn. The two sisters reunite, and the only task left is to take them home. Guiding them to the Fey Beacons, they light each one before plunging into the lake and back to their home. Amador is satisfied with the outcome of Gleam and Glister and offers to guide you to the Palace of Heart's Desire. Accepting her aid, you walk off into the mist following the dandelion's path. Chapter 5 Palace of Heart's Desire Guided by Amador, you part through the fog and find a twilight palace that emerges dreamlike from the clouds. A great marble tower ringed by delicate spires casts a shadow over the rooftops below. Another tower teeters nearby, torn from its foundation and held aloft by a coiled beanstalk. Monstrous vines cling to the palace walls and choke the promontory of rock on which it perches. Hundreds of birds burst from the canopy of the ancient forest below you and scatter in all directions. Moments later, a much more fearsome creature erupts from the woods, a sinewy pale green dragon that takes to the sky and flies towards the palace. Its mighty wings carry it to great heights. Once above the palace, it drops like a stone and vanishes from sight behind the palace's high wall. The creature that you've just witnessed is the Jabberwock and had just arrived home from its long hunt. You step forth into the courtyard of the palace and into its large garden. Solving a riddle in a location known as the Maiden's Pond, you retrieve a crown that you magically imbue at the tower of two entities, Envy and Wrath. Envy is a magical statue that resembles a lion, and Wrath is one that resembles a stag. Each one magically comes to life when adorned with the imbued version of the crown that corresponds to it, gold for Envy and silver for Wrath. The two were created to protect the garden when Zybelna was absent from the palace, and their presence indicates that Zybelna is currently missing. They aid you in unlocking the various doors that are within the castle, thus revealing the mysterious secrets of the Frozen Palace. You enter the palace doors and begin to explore it, stumbling upon a particularly wary butler named Thinnings. Earning his trust, he reveals to you some information. After using Zybelna's cauldron to neutralize the Archfey and most of her court, the hags of the Hourglass Coven left an organization called the League of Malevolence in the palace to guard the cauldron. Only three members of the League, Kalik, Warduke, and Zargosh, are in the palace presently. The League of Malevolence is searching Prismir for a unicorn horn so that Kalik can free Ringlerun, his arch enemy, from temporal stasis and steal his staff of power. To free a creature frozen in time, one must touch it with a unicorn horn while speaking the creature's true name. In regards to the Archfey, Zybilna is only an alias and will not work as a name to free her. Additionally, years ago, Zybilna befriended a Jabberwock and trained it to drink from her cauldron. It still frequents the palace and loiters around the cauldron, making it impossible for Kellogg and the others to guard the cauldron effectively. The only creature in the palace that stands a fighting chance against the Jabberwock is Zybilna's great owl, Bloodybeak. You thank Thinnings for the handy information and scour the palace of heart's desire for Zybilna's true name. Dodging through rooms of magic and encountering foes such as the League of Malevolence, you gather as many clues as you can find of Zybilna's true name. Many clues seem to indicate that her true name is Igwil, the Witch Queen, but some of her childhood items seem to indicate an alternative name, Natasha. Now knowing a few names to try, you make your way to the ballroom where you find the Jabberwock along with the frozen Zybelna. You lure the Jabberwock with the sound of music towards the aviary where Bloodybeak, the owl, attacks the Jabberwock on sight. With the beast distracted, 
You touch the unicorn horn onto the frozen archfey and speak her many names. After a few attempts, the name Natasha seems to do the trick. Her eyes spring to life as the rest of the body relaxes and animates. Once more able to move, Zybilna lurches forward a step, then quickly regains her balance. Damn, too late, she says with a snarl. Her eyes dart around in search of her enemies before fixing on you. Have we met? She asks. Ending of Wild Beyond the Witch Light You stand before Zybilna, the Archfey of Prismere. Zybilna requests that you update her on what has happened and you tell her as much as you know of the situation. It dawns on Zybilna that she has met you before when you were young and gives you a knowing look. Zybilna is troubled to learn of what has happened to Prismere and vows to undo the damage the Hourglass Coven has wrought, a task that will take considerable time and effort. The surviving hags can sense when Zybilna is released from temporal stasis, or, rather, they can sense when their hold of Prismere is lost. The instant Zybilna regains control of her domain, the hags can use their plane shift spells to flee to Gehenna where they maintain a cramped tower guarded by Yukaloth mercenaries. They don't think that Zybilna is aware of the tower, but her spies learned about it some time ago. Zybilna takes no immediate action against the surviving hags, preferring to let them stew in exile. The coven stays together even though its members constantly blame one another for their failures. The hags are united by the fear of Zybilna's wrath and they live in torment, dreading the day when Zybilna seeks them out and inflicts punishment on them for their wickedness. As beings of unfettered emotion and potential, children are of great importance to Zybelna. The Archfey sees to it that any children held captive by the Hourglass Coven are liberated, rid of unhappy memories, and escorted back to their home by pixie courtiers. Lastly, remembering your task from Madrig, you request that Zybelna conveys a message to the old man for he was the one who sent you to confirm her safety. She does so, and sends you back to the house of the old man barely clinging to life with a wide grin on his face. Hello everybody! I hope you enjoyed the story overview of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. As far as D&D adventures go, it's really weird. This is one of those adventures I recommend you give a read, just cause it's so creative. It's like reading a fairy tale unfold in an adventure. If you have an adventure that you'd like me to cover, do let me know. I uh, recently picked up Journey to the Radiant Citadel and hope to cover that soon. As of right now, the Spelljammer books are coming in in about a week, and I wish to pick that up to cover the adventures in it. If I recall correctly, it's a short adventure that goes on for about like a few levels, so it'll be something that I can cover in more detail. These videos take a lot of time for me to make, so I usually have to cut off uh, a lot of the stuff from the final product. I had a poll recently and asked if y'all wanted me to keep some of the smaller details, and it voted yes, so I had to tweak the script of this adventure a little bit. With the shorter adventures, I hope to keep more of the details in it so y'all can get a bit more of the fluff. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. Yeah, and uh, thanks!